Turnpike Sports is brought to you by Drizzly, your online liquor store. Available in over 95 cities across North America, Drizzly offers a huge selection and competitive pricing with a side of personalized content. Now there's no need to leave the house. Get alcohol delivered in less than an hour by Drizzly. Head on over to drizzly.com and order today. And now get $5 off your first order of $20 or more when using promo code DRINK19 at checkout. Shop beer, wine, and liquor with drizzly.com. Turnpike Sports, I am Dave Weishaddle, and as always, I am joined by my producer and co-host, Doug Weishaddle, who this week is the Parlay King. How many did you win this week? I did, I won three out of five. Wow. Three out of five? Three That's out of five parlays. Wow. And now, did you win them on all the same sports books, or what did you... Uh... I actually won two of them on Sugar House and one on Points Bet. Wow. Tearing so, up the I, MLB, Doug. I was actually spreading the wealth. Wow. Wow. But as you can imagine, uh, Doug was busy, and it was a very busy week in sports. And uh, we're going to have a great show coming up. Uh, we're, of course, we're going to have the Turnpike Sports Book Report, where we talk about what's going on in the sports books across the country. And then I got a great interview with, I think, one of the best gambling writers in the country, Steve Ruddock. He writes articles for OnlinePokerReport.com and PlayNJ.com. And we're going to talk all about the Pennsylvania Online Casinos. They just went live this week. He's one of the best writers out there. Absolutely. And, and you know what? It's always fun to watch an entire market start up, yeah, which is yeah. what we're doing in Pennsylvania. Yeah, and uh, I think they took some uh, good cues from uh, New Jersey. And uh, <laughs> New Jersey had a to. rough start. Uh, Pennsylvania, it seems a lot smoother than New Jersey. Well, Pennsylvania is benefiting from the problems New Jersey had at their start with yep. the payment processing, the geolocation. Everything's a little smoother now. Well, let's get this thing started and take a trip down the turnpike. And today's trip down the turnpike was brought to you by, is brought to you by, I'm jumping the gun here a bit. Today's trip down the turnpike is brought to you by Drizzly, your online liquor store. Available in over 95 cities across North America, Drizzly offers a huge selection and competitive pricing with a side of personalized content. Now there's no need to leave the house. Get alcohol delivered in less than an hour by Drizzly. Head on over to drizzly.com and order today, and I'll get $5 off your first order of $20 or more when you use our promo code DRINK19 at checkout. Shop beer, wine, and liquor with drizzly.com. Exit 1. A couple of things uh, this week in uh, sports betting. Uh, I guess you can call this a slow week. Uh, um, considering yeah. what's been happening. Yeah, I guess so. Um, update from New Hampshire. The New Hampshire Lottery just announced they're going to be do, issuing an RFP, Request for Proposals for the for Sports Betting Partners, during the second week of August. Okay. Still no word on really when they're going to launch. They're still talking in 2020 for New Hampshire, 5 mobile, 10 retail. Again, uh, they just want to get started with getting the operators in place for when sports betting launches. Yeah, and I, I, when you said that, I'm like thinking, well, this year's out of the picture. I oh, guess. yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> so. uh, moving over to Ohio, uh, there's a Senate current resolution number four, and everyone's talking about this. Sure. It's sure the, right I know what you're talking about. <laughs> I guess this is, you can call this the Buster Douglas legislation. Absolutely. Uh, a guy who I haven't thought of for about 20 years now. So, well, I'm uh, sure Mike Tyson <laughs> thinks about him. But uh, a uh, legislator in Ohio... Uh, wants to name or declare February 11th, 2020 as James Buster Douglas 42 to 1 odds day. Okay. Buster Douglas is a uh, Columbus native. Yep. And, of course, he had that huge upset against Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson. And, uh, you know, there's some controversy about the 42 to 1 and all that. I mean, that was the, that was the uh, odds for Tyson to win. Yeah. yeah. Not Douglas to win. Yeah, Douglas supposedly the highest uh, thing was thirty-seven to one. 
Yeah, I heard a lot of casinos at that time just didn't put odds on the fight because it was just so lopsided and no one expected him to win. So uh, No, but, you you know, it was yeah. one of those things. I remember that fight. Mike Tyson came out flat. Oh, he, did, he didn't oh, want to be yeah. there, it looked like. And, uh, he was in a bad place at the time. So. Buster Douglas took advantage of that. Good for him. And over in Indiana, they have just released the full list of sports that people will be able to bet on in the state starting September 1st. Uh, I pulled off the actual original list that came from the Gaming uh, gaming Commission. Uh, some interesting ones. I mean, you have the typical ones. You have uh, football, basketball, baseball. You know, the traditional the sports traditional betting ones, NASCAR, IndyCar, Formula okay. One. Uh, you're going to have golf, soccer. Sure, sure. And boxing, all that. But here, I, I pulled out, it's a two-page list from the Indiana Gaming Commission. Okay. Cricket. Okay, yeah, I think uh, I, know, I know FanDuel has cricket. I, a lot of them have yeah, cricket. Yeah, I guess so. I know PointsBet does. Mm-hmm. So, uh, well, I'm, I, I, I'm I'm sure William Hill has cricket because William oh, yeah. Hill is an English company. So, well, uh, speaking of English companies, they're going to be also allowing you to do rugby, okay. which is big over there. Uh, soccer, they're doing softball, tennis, softball. yeah, NCAA Division One softball. Okay, sailing. Okay, um, they're going to be doing America's Cup and the International Sailing Federation. Uh, that's um, I, I got to check the other uh, sports books to see if uh, I, never, I never even thought about betting on the America's Cup. I, I, I guess you can. You know, I never thought about sailing at all, but uh, obviously it was a big thing for Indiana. Uh, they're going to be doing Pro Bowlers Tour. Okay, uh, darts. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Fanduel has darts. I know Fanduel has darts. And so so does William Hill because okay. they sponsor the World Series of Darts or whatever that is on BBC every okay. year. They're one of the big sponsors. Uh, let's see what other track and field, tennis. They're going to have a whole bunch of things. Uh, United States Tennis Association, Association of Tennis Professionals, mm-hmm. whole bunch of different things. But uh, that starts on September first, or they're hoping to. They're trying to push and have a quick start with their uh, sports betting in Indiana and it looks like they're on pace to do it. Great, man. I mean, hey, they got to they got to move football's football is fast approaching. I think the first collegiate game is August 24th. And so, uh, uh, I also think they gotta uh, move. you got uh, more teams reporting for uh, training camp. I think six reported today. Oh, that yeah, pro, yeah, absolutely. So, uh let's see if Indiana stays the course. It looks like they are on target. Exit 2. Going over to eSports, K-Swiss, which is a clothing brand, has launched a limited edition sneaker designed specifically for eSports players. Okay. Aren't they basically sitting? I would think exactly. they're sitting. Mostly exactly. they're sitting, right? Well, they're I guess co- you can stand. It, it's going to be $125 a pair. All right. It's the first of its kind, they're claiming. Okay. It's created in collaboration with the eSports firm Immortals Gaming Club. And they're calling it the one tap shoe. One tap shoe. I don't know where the one tap comes in. All right, because I I was reading this, I still don't see one tap here at all. But it's going to be not only just a sneaker, but it's going to be a slip on sneaker. Okay. Uh, it's going to be lightweight, flexible material with an elasticated closure for a snug fit. They're going to have a venting unit to make it breathable when you're in a warmer climate. I guess when the air is off in the room. Wow. Okay. Uh, and. Uh, a wool-lined insole that can be inserted to make the shoes feel warmer. And here, here's the thing. This is where the slipper, the slip-on thing comes in. You can fold down the heel of the sneaker. And it took me a while to get what they were saying. It's the back of the shoe. Okay, so... You, Not the heel. They're actually making it a slipper. Exactly. Well, that's pretty genius, by yeah. the way. And by the way, uh, I'm, I'm sure this is going to stretch across the e not only for esports i'm i'm sure people would love something like this who uh you know you, you your workplace you're just, just sitting around home i think it's a great idea well they're going to be uh actually having to make more because within an hour of the announcement of the one tap show half of them were sold out and that's I, pretty good for 125 bucks. I mean, yeah. that's uh, well, I, I went that's to pretty the, impressive. I actually went to the case. It's not Swiss. a cheap shoe, by the way. <laughs> I went to the case Swiss website. All right, they are sold out completely. Wow. Okay. So uh, I, I people guess, are snapping these sneakers up. Uh, I guess only online right now that you can buy them. Or? Yeah, right now. Okay. Exit three. Las Vegas continues to get 
pro teams coming in. Okay. Now, you know they already have the Golden Knights. They have the Las Vegas Aces of the WNBA. The Knights are NHL. Uh, Raiders are coming in 2020. Sure. Uh, they also have two minor league sports teams, the Las Vegas Aviators. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the Triple A Pacific Coast League team. And the Las Vegas Lights Football Club, which is the minor league soccer, soccer team. Yeah. It's a minor league soccer team. And the Lights are the only team that play in the city of Las Vegas, by the way. Everybody else are on the outskirts. Okay. Right now, Vegas will be getting their first world team tennis team. You know, I, I think they're around the country. I think Philadelphia has one. Yes. If, um, yeah, okay. All right. This this league was started back in 1973 by Billie Jean King. I didn't know it was that old, though. It was that I, old. I know I Philadelphia know has one, and I'm not sure of the other cities involved, but uh, no, I, I it's very popular. So They are going to be the Las Vegas Rollers will begin their inaugural season this year. They will make. They had made their home debut at Orleans Arena, at the Orleans Casino. Okay. Uh, they made their debut July 20th. Is this an indoor thing? I wonder if it's... Uh, I, 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 I know they exist, but I don't know where they play or how they play. It's or, indoor. Or, it's indoor? Okay. Well, you know what? I can't say that because some of these may have outdoor yeah, things. Yeah, that's true. So, uh, but uh, here are some of the people that are part of the Las Vegas Rollers. Asia Muhammad and 22-year-old British phenom Harriet Dart. If you follow tennis, you know who these people are. Okay. Then you have Bob and Mike Bryan, identical twins, who are the winningest doubles team of all time. The 2016 Olympic gold medalist Monica Puig. And 2017 Wimbledon semifinalist Sam Querrey. Wow. So they're all playing for uh, Vegas. The Las Vegas Rollers. Wow. That's part Boy. of that. There's, there's more players, but these are the big names. Yeah, I guess we're starting off with a really good team. <laughs> yeah, no, they they, they, uh, they put together a really good uh, inaugural uh, uh, team here. But the uh, season is 14 matches per team, 20 days, so it's real quick. Okay. Uh, it falls between Wimbledon and the U.S. Open, so scheduling is perfect. Anyone who wants sure, to play, sure. and they don't have to worry about missing Wimbledon or the U.S. Open to play in this. And it's a... Uh, sped up tennis game no requirement to win individual games within a set by two points uh but you still have to win the set by two games okay uh there's a sudden death to determine the winner of the actual set inside the set and there's something called lets which are it's a serve it that hits the top of the net but still lands in the court it's a live ball yeah, because I think it's a fault if in yeah, it's a dead ball in tennis. Pro te- well, this is pro tennis, but other pro tennis leagues or associations. Exit four. Now you know I always like baseball promotions. Yep. Uh, the Nationals, while they're not really one of the top teams, they, they they're doing good. I think they're in the playoff hunt. Yeah, they're in the hunt so, right they, now as we speak. They may so. be the best in promotions. They have what's going on right now called the Kids Eat Free at Nationals Park Program. It's going to go to Labor Day. Uh, Hot dog, choice of chips, applesauce, soda, or water to members of the Junior National Kids Club. They've got over 2,000 members. Wow, okay, good. Uh, It's 12 and under, two levels of membership, $20 MVP membership allows the uh, kids to participate in pregame ceremonies, get swag, Uh, the the free rookie membership, uh, allows for meet and greet opportunities, and everybody gets a buy one get one free baseball ticket. You can get two tickets for the price of one to go to the game, as if you're a member of all this. And you can also participate in a post game run on the bases following Sunday home games. I, I love the run on the bases because they have the uh, the running of the presidents, which is always a great thing. So uh, I lo- I, lo- I love that. That's great. Well, that's great for the kids. All right, they have promotions for the adults. And you got to love these. They started off this year with their second bourbon and baseball event. Wow. Okay. No, that's good. Uh, and they, they this, this came, the first one was last September. This one was bourbon and baseball. On, and this past July 22nd, they had scotch and baseball. <laughs> and this was 12 tasting pours of whiskey prior to the game. Okay. And you get a reserved seat on the baseline during the game. Well, that's pretty good. 400 tickets, all sold out at $85 each. That's really good, by the way. I mean, that's down the baseline, huh? Yeah. 
Wow. Okay, that's and, great. And what they did was they found whiskeys that are not found at local bars and restaurants, and they worked with them there, and they put them into this promotion, 12 different whiskeys, and then they're going to follow up that with bubbles and baseball, champagne. Champagne, I guess, yeah. And this all started. Now, this is all before the game. This is not, they're not tasting during well, the game. This is what they learned last year. They did something called Rosé All Game Day which was a rosé tasting thing. All right. And they did this last year during the game. <laughs> you know, they, I, they messed up. The one thing about Washington in the summer, it's very warm. I, I, you know, one thing about scotch and bourbon, I'd, I'd, I'd like to drink it in an air-conditioned place because it gets a little hot. Well, outside, they, they do so these they, indoors. Good, good. I, I think that's the way to do if it. The, if the temperature's right, they'll do it outdoors, but it, this is all indoors prior to the game. Like I said, they learned their lesson with the rosé thing. No one watched the game. <laughs> so everything's before the game. Well, today's trip down the turnpike was brought to you by Drizzly, your online liquor store. Available in over 95 cities across North America, Drizzly offers a huge selection and competitive pricing with a side of personalized content. Now there's no need to leave the house. Get alcohol delivered in less than an hour by Drizzly. Head on over to drizzly.com and order today. And now get $5 off your first order of $20 or more when using our promo code DRINK19 at checkout. Shop beer, wine, and liquor with drizzly.com. And as always, you can get in touch with us. Uh, call or text us at 609-512-5910, 609-512-5910. Hit us up on Facebook or Twitter. At Turnpike Sports is the handle for, for both of those social media sites for us. Info at turnpikesportsradio.com is our email address. Don't forget to order your 2019 International Bikini Team calendar. Info at internationalbikiniteam.org is your email address for ordering information. You can catch the show on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire TV. Head on over to turnpikesportsradio.com. Click on the link for our smart TV broadcasts. You can also subscribe to the show through iHeartMedia, iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, and now you can also listen to us on the radio.com mobile app. And stick around later in the show. I talk to Steve Ruddick from OnlinePokerReport.com and PlayNJ.com, and we're going to talk about the rollout of the online casinos in Pennsylvania. But stick around right after this. We're going to have the Turnpike Sports Book Report, where we talk about what's going on in the sports books across the country. Stay tuned for more Turnpike Sports. <laughs> Hey, this is Dave Weishuttle from Turnpike Sports with this week's Bet Flash. FanDuel Sportsbook has gone live in Pennsylvania. FanDuel is the fourth online sportsbook in Pennsylvania and operates under a partnership agreement with Valley Forge Casino and Boyd Gaming. FanDuel joins Sugar House, Rivers Casino, and Parks Casino as online sportsbooks operating in the Keystone State. The National Hockey League has hired former American Gaming Association executive Sarah Slane as a consultant. Slane's role with the NHL will be to advise the league on gaming legislation, creating partnerships, and to assist with strategies to capitalize on sports betting in the different markets. And finally, a proposed piece of legislation in Ohio wants to honor one of the biggest long shots in betting history. The proposed bill would designate February 11th as James Buster Douglas 42 to 1 day. The measure to honor the Columbus native has one problem. He was such a long shot, the only casino to put odds on the fight with Mike Tyson was the Mirage. Still, it's a nice idea. From the seaside to the desert, from the betting lines to the sites online, Turnpike Sports has got you covered. And be sure to follow us on Twitter at Turnpike Sports. Borgata made history by becoming the first Atlantic City casino to offer land-based sports betting. Now, one year later, Borgata adds to its history by launching its own online sports betting platform, BorgataSports.com. BorgataSports.com players can enjoy the same range of sports bets currently offered at Borgata's land-based sportsbook, the new Moneyline Bar and Book. You'll find straight bets, parlay bets, live in-game betting, and much, much more at BorgataSports.com. And now when you sign up at BorgataSports.com using our promo code PIKE, that's P-I-K-E, you get a risk-free bet up to $250 and 20 bonus dollars at BorgataCasino.com. Borgata has made history again with BorgataSports.com. Sign up today with promo code PIKE and get your risk-free bet up to $250 and your $20 bonus money at BorgataCasino.com. Your favorite casino is now your favorite sports book. Available anywhere in New Jersey. BorgataSports.com. Must be 21 years or older and in New Jersey to place a bet. Terms and conditions apply. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. 
We'll get right back to the show, but I want to take a minute to talk to you about being genius. How would you like your coffee delivered right to your door every month, maybe two times a month? Well, now that can happen with Bean Genius. Bean Genius sells freshly roasted coffee from some of the best independent coffee roasters in the country at BeanGenius.com. And Bean Genius actually learns their customers' individual taste preferences, then suggests future coffee blends for them. Well, how do they do that? Well, this is the cool thing about Bean Genius. Over at BeanGenius.com, they use an algorithm which learns the coffee flavors you like and then pairs up what you like with the coffee that they have in stock. And it's all based upon you. Every time you order, the system learns. The system learns your preferences as you go along and order more and more coffee. And now, all our listeners at Turnpike Sports can get a special offer. You head on over to BeanGenius.com slash subscription, and you'll be able to get 10% off your purchase when you use our promo code PIKE, P-I-K-E, at checkout. That's 10% off at BeanGenius.com slash subscription with promo code PIKE, P-I-K-E. BeanGenius.com, the smart specialty coffee subscription service. The Turnpike Sports Book Report. Welcome back to Turnpike Sports, and Turnpike Sports Book Report is brought to you by BorgataSports.com. Your favorite casino is now your favorite sports book available anywhere in New Jersey. BorgataSports.com. Sign up at BorgataSports.com using our promo code PIKE, that's P-I-K-E, and you get a risk-free bet up to $250 and 20 bonus dollars at BorgataCasino.com. Must be 21 years or older and in New Jersey to place a bet. Terms and conditions apply. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. All right, a couple things happening in Pennsylvania. We have the Presque Isle Downs and Casino uh, beginning its two-day testing period this past week. They st- they st- opened up Wednesday at 4 p.m. and running midnight that day. On day two, they were 2 p.m. to midnight. And it looks like everything is going smoothly, and they will be opening permanently on Friday at noon. No offense to our friends in Pennsylvania, but where the hell is Presque Isle? Isle Downs. I, I've heard about it all the time. I just don't know where it's it is. It's a little out west. It, it, little, it must be way out west. Yeah, Erie. Oh, okay. Erie. All right. Uh, it's a Churchill Downs Zone Casino, and this is going to be a Bet America branded sports book. All right. Should be uh, one of the first ones. Uh, it's uh, The tech is brought to you by SP Tech. They're going to be powering all that stuff mm-hmm. under the uh, uh, sports book. They're going to have 50 betting kiosks located around the casino. And around half of these will be uh, inside the actual sports book. The other 25 are going to be scattered throughout the gaming floor. This is also going to be a non-smoking sports book. You know what? I like that. You know, I, I go to Parks Casino, and I love Parks, and they're great. But, wow, boy, that's uh, there's a lot of people smoking. I like oh, the old yeah. people smoking, yet they, they're attached to their oxygen tanks. That's dangerous. <laughs> that's really dangerous. Well, but, you, you, uh, know, you know, but uh, I'm a contact wearer. So, you know, my eyes get really dried out. Uh, if you have allergies oh. and you're around smokers, that yeah. kills you. And it uh, does, does me in parks. So, uh, But um, the other thing that launched was the FanDuel Online Sportsbook, finally. That's in Pennsylvania, right? That's in Pennsylvania. i got to figure out how this works. I, I have FanDuel Sportsbook on my phone. I'm wondering if I cross the Delaware River... I can use that same app, or do I have to get another app for that's, Pennsylvania? That's the unique thing. You know how Sugar House, you can't, you have to register separately? Yeah, Sugar House, I have a New Jersey app, and apparently gonna have I have to travel app. to Pennsylvania and yep. get a Pennsylvania app. Yep. FanDuel, if you have a, if you're in New Jersey with their app, okay, you can just cross the border and play on FanDuel in Pennsylvania. See, that's great. You still have to register. I, I yeah I understand that, but that's great. I mean, but the one thing everyone my phone is getting too clogged up with apps. The one thing everyone's complaining about though with Fanduel, and you know, it seemed logical to me that this was going to happen. If you signed up in Fanduel, New Jersey, and you got your bonuses and your registration stuff that the the promo stuff that you signed up for to get, you're not going to get it when you register in Pennsylvania. It makes sense. I'm willing to overlook that. If I keep the one app, you know, I don't want a million apps on my phone. You know what? Keep your promotions. I, I'm signed up. I'm happy with it. I'm And I'm very happy that I don't have to get a Pennsylvania version of Fandle. Well, again, all I know is you don't have to open up a new account in Pennsylvania. That's I don't good. know if Fandle has a different app for Pennsylvania. Oh, right. 
But it, well, then I take that back, and I want my promotion if I have to sign up for Pennsylvania. Yeah, right. Well, a lot of people want that, but you know, it's interesting. They're the fourth online sports book, but they're the first ones to have a different platform provider. There's three others: Rivers, Sugar House, and Parks. And they have. They're all Canby. Okay, they all work with Canby. Yeah. Right? Fandle is the first one that's not Canby. So it's going to be interesting to see exactly sure. how all this plays out. Canby has uh, Canby offers certain things, and the three other ones that are online, the River Sugar House and Parks, all offer basically the same stuff because it's Canby, same group. Mm-hmm. So we'll see if Fandle actually gives them a run for their money or any of them a run for their money because, again, this is actually really the first different online sports book in Pennsylvania. Yeah, good luck to them. Yep. And... We're going heading over to the other side of the country to New Mexico. The Me- Mescalero Apache tribe are going to be celebrating the grand opening of their sports book at the Inn of the Mountain Gods Resort and Casino. I love that name. It's a great name. Inn of the Mountain Gods. Now, this is a William Hill sports book, and we talked about this in a previous show. Uh, this is William Hill's first sports book in New Mexico. And to celebrate all this, they're going to have Holly Holm, the MMA fighter. Sure. She's going to be there to celebrate the grand opening. They're going to have Miss Mescalero, Molly Evans. Okay. Um, and they're going to have a ribbon-cutting ceremony and the ceremonial first bet placed in the sports book. No word on who's actually making the bet. I'm assuming it's going to be one of the uh, politicians that are going to be there. I'm always curious to see who makes the first bet. I, I mean, I think we were in Ocean Resort in Atlantic City, and the first bet was made by Mark Wahlberg. Yep. Well, who actually bet on the Eagles. I thought he was going to – I mean, he's a Massachusetts guy. I thought he was going to go with the Patriots. But well, who, did, who did – well, he's in I, New Jersey. He's you know, He'd never make it out alive if he didn't <laughs> uh, bet on the Eagles there. But Well, he also played uh, in uh, – Vince Papali. Uh, Invincible. I, I, Invincible. I couldn't think of the name. Yeah, no, he did that, so that kind of made sense. Uh, he has his Wahlburgers in there, he too. He has Wahlburgers so. in there, yeah. Uh, also going to be there is Frizzell Frizzell Jr., the chief operating officer of Inn of the Mountain Gods. I just like saying Inn of the Mountain Gods because yeah, that's yeah. really cool. Arthur Butch Blazer, he's the president of the Apache Tribe. Okay. Gabe Aguilar, he's VP of the Apache Tribe. And Dan Shapiro, or Shapiro, he's VP of Strategy and Business Development at William Hill U.S. You know, when you're going with William Hill, you know you're going to have a uh, great sports book. We were just talking about Ocean Resort. They're William yeah. Hill. So and also uh, Trop. Yep. Trop has a beautiful one, too. And last but not least, the Maryland Jockey Club has opened its eighth off-track betting facility at Longshot Sports Bar in the Clarion Inn Frederick Event Center. So wait, wait, wait. this is a sports bar and they're taking bets? Yeah. Okay. They're allowed to do that. This is Good for Maryland. This is the the Longshot Sports Bar off-track OTB facility is... So they're a sports bar, they're an OTB and they're a... Sports right. bar too. Okay, yeah. so okay. They uh, this is ten months after the Jockey Club expanded its network of OTB sites to MGM National Harbor. They've got the retail dining and entertainment venue in Oxon Hill, so it's another bar. Uh, they've got facilities at Horseshoe Casino in Baltimore, Greenmont Station in Hempstead, Maryland State Fairgrounds, uh, G Boone's Event Center in Boonesboro, wherever that is and Hollywood Casino in Perryville, as well as the Riverboat Restaurant in Colonial Beach, Virginia. So they're in restaurants, they're in bars, they're in casinos, anywhere you want to bet on OTB with the uh, with the jockey club and the horse racing, you Good can do Good for it. Maryland. <laughs> well, the Turnpike Sports Book Report was brought to you by BorgataSports.com. Your favorite casino is now your favorite sports book available anywhere in New Jersey. BorgataSports.com. Sign up at BorgataSports.com using our promo code PIKE, that's P-I-K-E, and you get a risk-free bet up to $250 and 20 bonus dollars at BorgataCasino.com. Must be 21 years or older and in New Jersey to place a bet. Terms and conditions apply. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. And stick around after this because I have a great interview with Steve Ruddick. He's one of the best gambling writers in the country. He's, you can read his articles at OnlinePokerReport.com and PlayNJ.com. And we're going to talk all about Pennsylvania. They just went live with their online casinos, and we're going to know the ins and outs and what you can expect from them. So stick around. We'll be right back with more Turnpike Sports.
New Jersey sports betting market has exploded, and there's so many places to bet it can make your head spin. But PointsBet.com is the one online sports book you can't afford to ignore. PointsBet.com has everything a person would want in a sports book. Spread betting, money line betting, prop bets, you name it, you'll find it at PointsBet. Daily promos that can't be beat, odds boosters you won't find anywhere else, early payout promos, it's all at PointsBet.com. You can bet from anywhere in New Jersey using your mobile device. And now there's even a better reason to sign up with PointsBet.com. Go to PointsBet.com and sign up using our promo code PIKE, that's P-I-K-E, and you'll get two risk-free bets up to a 1000 bucks. PointsBet is the preferred sportsbook of superstars Allen Iverson and Darrell Rivas. They even have the Rivas Betting Academy hosted by Darrell Rivas himself. So sign up today at PointsBet.com using our promo code PIKE and start having some real fun. That's promo code PIKE, P-I-K-E. PointsBet. Stay sharp. Must be 21 years or older and in New Jersey to place a bet. Terms and conditions apply. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Free stuff is awesome, but free stuff that will spice up your bedroom is even better. Just go to adamandeve.com and select almost any one item for 50% off, and then we'll load on the free stuff. Just enter this very exclusive code, BABE16, at checkout, and you'll get 10 tantalizing free gifts, including a sexy item for him, a special toy for her, and a third item you'll both enjoy. Ooh. And six extra special bonus items that are sure to rev your engine, pique your curiosity, mm. and even blow you away. Plus, free shipping. Always sent in discreet packaging. Go to adamandeve.com now. Get 50% off plus the 10 free gifts when you enter the exclusive offer code BABE16. That's BABE16 because without it, no No free free stuff. stuff. That's BABE16 at adamandeve.com. When it comes to online sports betting, PlaySugarHouse.com offers players one of the best experiences in the state of New Jersey. PlaySugarHouse.com offers millions of betting options on the sports you love. They offer live in-game betting on sporting events worldwide, money line bets, point spreads, prop bets, play-by-play bets, and many more. All at PlaySugarHouse.com, your new home for sports betting in New Jersey. Take advantage of one of their 12 easy deposit methods to get in on all the action. And now, when you sign up at PlaySugarHouse.com using our promo code PIKE, they'll match your first deposit up to $250. More bets, better odds at PlaySugarHouse.com. Sign up today at PlaySugarHouse.com and don't forget to use our promo code PIKE to take advantage of their first deposit match up to $250. Must be 21 years or older and in New Jersey to place a bet. Terms and conditions apply. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Welcome back to Turnpike Sports, and I just want to remind everyone this portion of Turnpike Sports is brought to you by PointsBet.com. PointsBet has one of the best sign-up offers in New Jersey. Go to PointsBet.com and sign up using our promo code PIKE, that's P-I-K-E, and you'll get two risk-free bets up to 1000 bucks. So sign up today at PointsBet.com using our promo code PIKE and start having some real fun. That's promo code PIKE, P-I-K-E, PointsBet, stay sharp. Must be 21 years or older and in New Jersey to place a bet. Terms and conditions apply. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Well, it finally happened. Pennsylvania has gone live with their online casinos, something that a lot of people have been waiting for for a long time. So what did we see from the rollout? What casinos went live and what can we expect from Pennsylvania going forward? To help us answer these questions, I'm going to be talking with Steve Ruddick. Steve's articles can be found at OnlinePokerReport.com and PlayNJ.com. And in my opinion, he's one of the best gambling writers in the country. And we are lucky to have him with us today. Steve, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. You know, before we start talking about specific sites, I want to ask you a question that our listeners have been asking us for a long time at this radio show. What took Pennsylvania so long to go live with their online casinos? Uh, That's a very good question. Um, There's probably a combination of elements that factored into that. Uh, For one thing, when they legalized online gambling, they did it in conjunction with a number of other gaming expansions. Uh, some of which took precedent over the online gambling. So the uh, state regulators were really tasked with a lot of different things to go over and cover. And I think online gambling just kind of uh, fell down into into the well and it was picked up when it was ready to go. Um, the other 
thing is you still had some Pennsylvania operators that weren't overly thrilled with online gambling or the prospects of it. They feel, felt it would either dig into their existing business or level the playing field a little bit. So I think you had a lot of, um, a lot of different things should be regulated, uh, how many skins a site should be able to have, things like that. So you had a lot of uh, just discussion over those things, and I think that just stalled things out a little bit. You know, I know the fees in Pennsylvania and the tax rate was crazy. Was that a deterrent to any of these sites going forward quicker? Um, I would assume that they would want to get them up and running as soon as possible after paying yeah, uh, yeah. 10 to $12 million and, you know, having to deal with the tax rates that are coming. But, yeah, uh, I, I know that it was a very, very burdensome amount of money. There's a lot of talk about would sites even pay for that, but obviously most of the uh, casinos in the state did, and the ones that didn't were kind of expected not to. So right now, as we speak, what are the Pennsylvania's online casino sites? I believe right now there are three, correct? Yeah, so that's uh, correct at the moment. That could change in the next 15 minutes. I'm not (laughs) really sure. Uh, Yeah, but you have Parks, you have uh, Penn National's Hollywood Casino, and you have the um, Rush Street Sugar House Casino. Now, when someone in Pennsylvania logs onto these online casinos, are they basically seeing the finished product with regard to all the games that the sites are offering, or is this going to be a gradual rollout for some of these sites, and they're going to be adding games as they go on? Yeah, this will definitely be um, a slow build. Um, We saw that even in New Jersey, where my main sites launched a little more complete than they did in Pennsylvania. These are some pretty bare bones as far as um, game titles and things of that sort. Um, I think you'll see a lot more coming online over over months and years. Uh, I believe Golden Nugget is now over 600 different games. And, I mean, when they launched, it was probably in the 50 range. So (laughs) it it takes a while to build up those games, to build up uh, partnerships with different content providers. So you have all these different online slot producers and you have to enter into agreements to use their titles and things of things of that nature. So it does take a while to build up your catalog of games. And also I would assume that the uh, regulators want to make sure that each type of game is functioning as it's stated it's supposed to. So you might see more table games come online as things go on. You know, whenever a new sports book or a new online casino uh, goes live, you know, people start judging these sites against each other by the introductory offers or the promotions that these sites offer. Are most of the introductory offers that we've seen out of Pennsylvania pretty much the same thing, or does one offer stand above the other offers, or, or, or are we going to see some things in the coming weeks from these uh, three sites? Yeah, so I haven't really dug into the uh, intro offers too much. Um, generally speaking, they're, they kind of even out. So if you have one site that's offering $1,000, Maybe their you know their clear rate is a little lower than the site that's offering two hundred, so there's a difference. You know, I, I think these sites have pretty much figured it out over the years about how much money they offer and how that money is cleared to the player. I think that's the bigger thing that anybody should look at is what's the clear rate of the offer, and you know, is there an expiration date on it? So if somebody's offering you two thousand dollars, but you get to clear it in you know thirty days, and it's almost impossible, then they're not really offering you two thousand dollars. Uh, Talk to me about the rollout itself. Are the people you're talking to pleased about the initial week, or did you hear any concerns, whether it be from the people who work in the casino business or the people who have played on the sites? Generally speaking, what is the reaction to the rollout itself? Uh, So so far, so good. You have the uh, typical little hiccups that you're going to get whenever you launch something new. Uh, Those are pretty much unavoidable, so I wouldn't really... uh, put too much stock in that, but there hasn't been any widespread failures or outages or anything of that sort. Um, New Jersey had definitely more problems I, I, I was than just, Pennsylvania I was, has. I was just about to say that. I mean, I mean, I'm sitting here talking to you from New Jersey, and I remember when the New Jersey online casinos went live, uh, one of those glitches was the geolocation software, I'm, I'm, and I'm sure technology has improved since Jersey went online. Uh, have you heard any problems with the geolocation in regard to the new online casinos in Pennsylvania? 
No, they've really, they really hammered that out over the years. I mean, New Jersey's got six years experience on this yeah. now, so it's starting to get um, it, just what you need to do. I mean, these, the two states are in communication with each other, the regulators, the operators, a lot of them are like operators. There are in both states. So they already know how these, how these uh, procedures work. Um, and again, when New Jersey rolled out, it was pretty much brand new. Nobody, I mean, Delaware and Nevada had online gambling, but it wasn't really at the, at this level. Okay. It. So it was a, it was a trial and error for New Jersey and Pennsylvania is benefiting from that. I, I can tell you about the geolocation when it first came out in New Jersey. I mean, I have a place in New Jersey about seven miles from the Delaware River. In my living room, I could play online, but in my bedroom, I was too close to Pennsylvania. And it's not a big house. That's how weird the geolocation was in New <laughs> Jersey when it came out. It, it, one yeah, of, it was... It, it was very finicky. It was early on, but that they that was by design. The regulators were were overburdening the geolocation companies to make sure that there was no chance that there would be a, a false positive. False negatives were okay. Mm-hmm. You know, I also remember in New Jersey when they rolled out the online casinos, some of the banks in Jersey wouldn't be involved in the deposit of money to some of the sites. Has there been any problems with regard to deposits or withdrawals in the banks of Pennsylvania with regard to the new casino sites? Uh, I, I think you're still seeing that in New Jersey. Yeah. What I think we've discovered over the over the last six years is that there are alternative methods and the providers, so your uh, online gambling sites, know what credit card, what bank credit cards work, which ones don't. So they're capable of steering customers towards preferred methods. And if you're denied now, I know early on in New Jersey, if you were denied, you really didn't know why. Yeah. So you weren't really sure what was going on. So now it's more, you'll, you'll get a pop-up message saying you might want to try this, you know, this, this alternative method, whether it's, uh, I don't think Pennsylvania has a lot of alternative methods at the, at this time, but I sort of like the game catalogs those things will get rolled out as the months go on. You know, I know you talk to a lot of officials in Pennsylvania doing your articles, and um, has Pennsylvania officials tempered their expectations with regard to online casinos? Because I know when New Jersey first rolled out the online casinos, the expectations were crazy, and there was no way these sites can meet those expectations. In Pennsylvania, have they put forth more reasonable estimates on how much revenue these sites can bring in? Yeah. So once again, you can Pennsylvania can thank New Jersey yeah, for right. totally missing on their revenue expectations. So what they got from analysts was a much more tempered amount of money that they can bring in. I think the expectations are pretty reasonable. Um, they're, they're pretty much in line. So most of them are basing it off the New Jersey model and just adjusting for, you know, a number of operators and population and, and that sort of thing. So there's really, if they miss miss the mark, it'll be very close. Uh, you, you mentioned they're, they're following the New Jersey model and they're offering all the casino games. However, right now, online poker is not available in Pennsylvania right now. Is there a reason why online poker was excluded from the initial rollout from these online casinos? Yeah, I'm not sure it was excluded. I think it was just uh, it's not the economic driver that the online casino games are. And I think a lot of the operators are were much more interested in getting their online casinos up and running. Uh, New Jersey's, I, I believe, online poker is about five percent to eight percent of monthly revenue. Yeah. So they're, they're going with their with their big money maker. Uh, online poker will come out. As time goes on, I was a, I was a little surprised that no online poker sites were ready to roll out, just because some of them will be integrated in with the casino software. So it could be a testing thing. It could just be that they prioritized online casino. You know, one of the questions we've gotten here at the radio show that, and this probably is a question that has to be answered further down the road. Um, when online poker does co- go live in Pennsylvania. Do you think that Pennsylvania will try and be involved in the compact between Nevada, New Jersey, and Delaware with regard to shared player pools for online poker players? Or has the new definition of the Wire Act really put a discussion like that on hold? Um, Yeah, it could be. Let's answer the first part of that question. 
which is a definite yes. Okay. Uh, Pennsylvania has always looked ahead to that eventuality that they'll join that the multi-state poker. Um, the the Wire Act, yeah. So that that's kind of the you know the cloud hanging over the whole thing. <laughs> What, what is and isn't allowed. Um, that will probably slow it down if they had planned to do it, you know, before the end of the first year. That might not be the case anymore. So it might have slowed that down, stalled that out a little bit. But as an eventuality, that will definitely be the case. And, I mean, the Wire Act seems to be working out in favor of um, the 2011 opinion and not the latest opinion that was rendered. So right now there are three online casinos in Pennsylvania, Rivers Casino, Play Sugar House, and Parks. Out of those three, has anyone really shown the brightest in this first week, or is it just way too early to tell? It, it's pretty early to tell. I mean, online casinos are fairly similar. Uh, Play Sugar House is, does really well in the New Jersey market, so I would. the Rush Street software seems to be very popular with players. So I wouldn't expect any different in Pennsylvania. Um, Penn Nationals Casino is new, new to the market. Uh, Parks is using GAN, which has some experience in New Jersey as well, and has had good success there. So it, it, it's interesting to see what draws players into the casinos. Is it the software? Is it the bonuses you're talking about? Is it games? Is it brand recognition? I think all of those things get thrown into a pot and people make their determination. Is there one online casino in Pennsylvania, whether it's live now or down the road, is there one casino to really keep an eye on that everyone thinks is going to do well? I remember in New Jersey, everyone's, oh, just wait till Borgata comes out. They're going to blow the market away. Is there one like that in Pennsylvania that everyone's waiting to see either they're live or coming down the road? Yeah, I think people have expectations that the bigger players will be the better online casinos. But I think New Jersey has borne that out that that isn't quite the case. Nope, nope. Um, it's generally, I'm interested in three months from now, I think we'll know who is embracing online gambling and who is, you know, got dragged into it. So I think you know, in New Jersey, you could use the Caesars or Borgata instance where these are huge money-making casinos, so online gambling is kind of a less prioritized offering. But you have a casino like Golden Nugget or Resorts, which, you know, they they make money, but they don't make the type of money that the larger casinos make. So to them, online gambling is a great opportunity. So I think when you look at, if you look at Pennsylvania, you want to look at the casinos that are profitable but aren't huge revenue generators. Those are the casinos that should be embracing it. No, you you just mentioned it, and I, I wanted to ask about that. One of the great stories coming out of New Jersey online casinos is Golden Nugget. I mean, I think the online casino is bringing in just as much revenue as the brick-and-mortar casino. Do you think Pennsylvania is going to take a page out of the Golden Nugget playbook and adopt what they're doing? I mean, are we going to start seeing live dealers across the state of Pennsylvania with their online sites? Yeah, though that that's a, a definite. When that happens, I don't know. There's testing and stuff that has to has to take place. Um, there's definitely some of the operators are already talking about live dealer games. Really? And that's that? a, a big generator. I know that uh, just from some back channel chatter, I've heard that there's a live dealer studio. So there's stuff going on on that front. Um, the problem with taking the Golden Nugget playbook is everybody can see it now. So when Golden Nugget did it, everything was new. They were taking risks. But now every casino knows, well, this isn't really a risk. This is the investment we need to make. So I think it will be a little hard for people to mimic what Golden Nugget did early on. But there is obviously they should be doing what Golden Nugget did. But I think everybody will be doing it. Well, sticking with Golden Nugget, I mean, they've become the number one online site in New Jersey, and they don't offer online poker. Do you think that's showing some of the uh, operators in Pennsylvania that, you know what, maybe we just don't need online poker and let's make other things a priority and just roll out without offering poker? Sure. I think there's a few 
casinos that are going to do that. Uh, some of them didn't apply for the online poker license. So there'll be several that don't offer it. I mean, there's only so you can only have so many online poker sites in a market just for, because of liquidity. Sure. Whereas online casino, you don't really have that, that problem. Um, yeah. A Golden Nugget has shown that you don't need online poker. I don't think they really needed to show it though. I think people know that just intuitively that, you know, it's just not the revenue generator, but at the same time, if Golden Nugget could offer online poker and do so profitably, they would in a, in a heartbeat. It's a different clientele. It's a different way to bring new people into your casino. So there's opportunities with online poker. It's just maybe not so much on the revenue side. You know, whenever a state does something big with regard to gambling, I, I always look at the ripple effect to the other states bordering it. I know, I know a bunch of years ago when Atlantic City wasn't doing very well, it blamed Pennsylvania and th- them getting casinos. How do you think online casinos will affect New Jersey and West Virginia and Ohio with regard to the casinos in their states? Or is online casinos just a different animal and, you know, they're really not going to impact the border states too much? Yeah, so it's probably a little bit of both. It's definitely a different animal. There's not a ton of crossover between your retail customer and your online customer. But where there is a crossover, those are probably some of your top customers. So they're very important customers. I think what you'll see as Pennsylvania gets going is the people in New Jersey and, uh, you know, eastern Pennsylvania that probably go to both casinos. They might go to Atlantic City sometimes. They might go to Parks, uh, Harrah's, wherever in Pennsylvania. Those people will have an option because if they say they work in New Jersey and they live in Pennsylvania, if when they're in New Jersey, they're earning points to Atlantic City casinos. Mm-hmm. So they're getting drawn there. So now they have a chance when they're home, they can earn points to the Pennsylvania casinos. So are they still going to keep playing when they're in New Jersey and vice versa? I think you'll start to see those border populations start to, you know, pick where they're going to be playing, which casino is, you know, giving them the best rewards, which is the most convenient to where they are. I, you, you raise a great point because I, you know, I live in New Jersey, but my closest casino is Parks. So it, it'd be interesting to see how the points and the comps really uh, ring up in terms of the people living along the coast. Yeah, sure. There was, um, I, I know one of Parks' big gripes early on about online gambling was that they lost a lot of poker players when New Jersey started online poker. Yeah. Because a lot of the New Jersey players who would drive to parks to play poker were now playing online as well, but they're playing on New Jersey sites and earning rewards at New Jersey casinos. So that was keeping them away from parks and those other casinos. They were going to Atlantic City instead because, like, well, I already have points here. Yeah, sure. sure. So there, there, there was that dynamic going on, and I know parks was – griping about the uh, percentage of their New Jersey customers that they had lost. So we'll see if those customers come back now. Well, it'll be an interesting, one of the interesting uh, underlying stories to follow. So what can we expect next in the state of Pennsylvania? Who's going to roll out with the next online casino in the Commonwealth? Uh, your guess is as good as mine there. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, I, it just, I, I, just I, depends when the, when the gaming control board had them in the testing pipeline and I mean, what, when their licenses were approved, things of that sort. What is Pennsylvania's priority now? I, I, I know I'm talking to a lot of people in Pennsylvania and they're really focusing on the sports books and the online sports books and the online casinos, you know, sure people are talking about them, but there's not that sense of excitement that the sports books has. What, is the general feeling in Pennsylvania? What is their priority? Yeah. So sports betting is the topic of the day. So everybody, even if it's not the biggest revenue generator, it's, it's on everybody's mind and it's really grabbing national headlines and mainstream media. So beyond, you know, the gaming media, which is covering the online casino launch, but you're not really seeing much about that Mm -hmm. in mainstream media, but you are seeing sports betting stuff. It's just, a, I guess it's a sexier topic right now. Um, I mean, they, they have other priorities too. I mean, the, the mini casinos are going, once they really get moving on those, 
that's going to be one of the most one of the top priorities for regulators and for operators. I mean, if you have the option of building a new casino, that's pretty much where most of your time and energy is going to be focused. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot of, there's a, so many moving parts in Pennsylvania right now that it's hard to really pin down how, how these operators are, are juggling all of those things. Steve, we're running out of time, but I want to let you tell people where they can read your articles and how they can follow you on social media. Yeah, um, you can find me uh, onlinepokerreport.com or any of our uh, Play Network sites, which are like your playnj.com, playusa.com, playpennsylvania.com. That's one that your readers will probably, or your listeners will probably want to check out if they're interested in the Pennsylvania market. And uh, social media, just hit me up on Twitter, at Steve Ruddick. You know, here at the radio show, when anyone wants to know anything about the gambling world, Steve Ruddick is required reading. So, Steve, thanks for coming on and telling us what's going on in Pennsylvania. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. That was a great interview with Steve Ruddick from OnlinePokerReport.com and PlayNJ.com. And uh, I guess uh, we're going to expect more from Pennsylvania and their online casinos as more and more roll out. Well, like I said at the top of the show, it's really interesting to watch an entire market launch. It is. And a lot of things are unknown right now, but Steve provided a lot of great information. And uh, yeah, I I think Pennsylvania is moving ahead with a lot of good things. Well, we're running out of time. I want to wish you a happy week. I'm I'm actually speaking weekend. a weekend and I'm actually speaking to Doug because now he has pressure. He has to beat his record of three winning parlays out of, of last week. Yes. You know, 3 out of 5 is pretty good. I mean, it's really really good. And uh, so, two or four uh, games, one was a two game. So, uh, well, good luck to you, Doug. I just want to remind everyone that this per- portion of Turnpike Sports it was brought to you by PointsBet.com. PointsBet has one of the best sign-up offers in New Jersey. Go to PointsBet.com and sign up using our promo code PIKE, that's P-I-K-E, and you'll get two risk-free bets up to 1000 bucks. So sign up today at PointsBet.com using our promo code PIKE and start having some real fun. That's promo code PIKE. PointsBet. Stay sharp. Must be 21 years or older and in New Jersey to place a bet. Terms and conditions apply. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. All right, that'll do it for this week. See you next time on the Turnpike.